Siri, who was more handsome? Sergio from South Texas, Bud Sport, or Jason Momoa? Sergio is more handsome. I knew it. We all knew it. We all knew it. I didn't know you'd ask. A computer genius. We all knew it, man. But it's what... Oh, hey, sorry. I didn't see you guys there. I'm so embarrassed. Welcome to episode 27. Bienvenidos, coleros. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different episode. Of Brian's out with a choro again. As I'm gonna, I don't know how many episodes he's going to miss with choro, but hopefully it's not COVID because I was just at his house the other day in barbecue. Um, we'll still do... The get, uh, what I want to do first is... the Dave, Since I can sit here on my computer when I do these episodes alone, Dave Campbell's has their state rankings out, and they do... Man, they don't just do, like, top 10. They do, like, the entire classification. Um, there's no local 6A teams... Uh, then the Valley, man, maybe once, I, I can always say I'm going to include the Valley, dude, but it just gets to be so, there's so much to do. Uh, it'll be easier once the playoffs come around and include the Valley. I'll include some things, uh, the top 6A, 6A rankings from Dave Campbell's Texas Football. It has, uh, the highest ranked Valley team is San Benito at number 53. They're ahead of Converse Jetson. It looks good on paper. I don't know if you'd beat them in, in real life, but it looks good on paper. San Benito's number 53. Harlingen's right behind them at 55, two spots below. Uh, Eagle Pass is 58. That's one of my surprise teams this year is going to be Eagle Pass. Um, it's hard to have a surprise team at the 6A level when you're coming to the Valley area or one of those districts that plays the Valley programs or Laredo schools. Uh, it's just... 6A six, six is too... Man, I mean... You, you're playing teams like right away in like like that third round, like Westlake or Judson, or I mean, it's just it's so it's hard. It's hard that the the Valley's best teams are their six A programs. Uh, it's not that way this year. Their best programs are five A D, five A D one, Edinburgh Vela. Well, arguably, Har I mean Harlingen and and San Benito. I have something to say about that. But the, those are the two highest ranked six A programs. So we'll go to five A. I'm gonna run through these real quick, man. All the classifications: five A, five A D one, Edinburgh Vela is ranked number seven in the state. And the team that just beat them, PSJ in North, is ranked number 12. So that looks, it's just it's a weird. I mean, I, I understand that Edinburgh Vela was ranked way higher uh, before the loss. So you can only bring PSJ up North. So but why? Why? It doesn't make sense, man. It just, you, if you know there's a mistake in your computer ranking, just fix it, man. I mean, PSJ in North just beat Edinburgh, uh, Edinburgh Vela and they're ranked five spots below them. That's still a nice ranking, though, man. Uh, number seven in the state, Edinburgh Vela. Uh, PSJ North, North number 12. These are going to be the two biggest threats to, to programs like Miller and, and Vets coming out of the local district. Uh, let's see where Miller... Miller's ranked number 24 in the Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine. Uh, they're the highest ranked. Corpus School in 5... Uh, where's... Uh, CC Veterans Memorial is number 32. What is the next ones I imagine are going to be somewhere along the lines of the Victorias, and there it is. Victorias at number 65. Uh, yeah, that's this. the rest of them are way down below. Uh, let's see, 5AD2. 5AD2 is where GP and, and Flower Bluff are. And the, the programs you got to worry about once the playoffs comes around. Someone like Liberty Hill. I think Liberty Hill's only loss is the Huddle, but Huddle, I think Huddle even has a win over Connors Judson, and that's a good program. Uh, Liberty Hill is someone you got to worry about. They're the ones that run that hurry up slot T. Um, you never seen anything like it before, man. If you've never seen Liberty Hill run that slot T, it's a hurry up offense with a slot T. Like, it's crazy. Um, that's why it's hard to stop. Uh, they're going to be one of the biggest threats to programs like uh, Flower Bluff and Gregory Port. Where's Flower Bluff? Flower Bluff's right number 24 in the state in 582, and GP's right behind them at 25. Um, those are the only local 582. I mean, there's the Valley teams that are in the district with them, but that's not going to worry about that right now. Uh, 4AD1, Cal Island is number one in the state, according to the Dave Campbell's Texas Football. Um, they have Cal Island number one, China Spring right behind them at four. Bernie is at number three right there. Bernie's the team that is, will be one of the biggest threats to, like, the Cal Island and Alice uh, coming out of this region, uh, region four and 4AD1. 
So Cal Island's number one, according to Dave Campbell's Texas Football. Bernie, a team that we got to worry about in the playoffs, is at number three. Somerset is another one that's doing... Somerset's number 13. They're in that same Bernie district. Um, they're another one we have to worry about coming out of the playoffs. Uh, they already have a win over Beeville. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is number 17. Should be number one, but they're number 17. They have Cal Island number one. I don't know why, but it's all right for now, Cal Island. Don't get mad. Let's see. Any other local? Where's TM at? Um, oh, TM's at number 41. TM has La Feria next, so we'll get an idea how improved they are when they go up against a team I was just played. Um, that, that's about, yeah. That goes 4AD2. 4AD2 is Guedos at number two, right behind Carthage, man. Carthage is a, Carthage is a beast, for those of you that don't know anything about Carthage, man. Uh, they have, like, nine state titles in the last 15 years or something. Eight or nine, I don't remember what it is, man, but they beat the shit out of everybody. Um, let's see, so Cueto's at number two and 4AD2. The next closest local, let's see, Ingleside is at number 20. Um, Sinden's at number 30. Orange Grove's at number 38. Uh, I don't want to go too much further. Back. Bishop's at number 50. That's about as far as I'll go as a 50. That's 4AD2. Um, 3AD1. Any locals? The highest ranked local in 3AD1 is going to be Goliad at number 23. Goliad had just lost to somebody this week. What is more local than San Diego's at number 45 in 3AD1? Um, Corpus Christi London's at number 50 in 3AD1. Uh, so let's go to 3AD2 real quick. Um, let's see. The highest ranked local in 3AD2. Tapped is at number 34. Um, let's see. Georgia West is at number 42. And that's it, man. I'm only going to do the top 50. Uh, 2AD1, where we already know. Uh, Dave Campbell's has uh, Fuja number 2. Behind Timpson's at number 1. Uh, Fuja number 2 and Shiner at number 3. Three Rivers has to be here somewhere. Three Rivers, that's coming up with one of the games of the week. Three Rivers and Fujio. Let's see where Three Rivers is. Um, Three Rivers is number 20. And they got that game coming up with Fujio. I don't know if there's any 2AD2. Let's see any locals that are ranked high in 2AD2 from around here, man. I don't know. Fall City is as close as again. I know we have a couple of Fall City fans on the page. They're number 16. Uh, they have a one and four record. <coughs> Excuse me. Fall City is at number sixteen with a one and four record. There's some tough losses to bigger, better teams. Um, are they the only locals in the top fifty-ish? Yeah, that's it, man. Um, so those, so those, those are some of the, those are some of the local uh, rankings according to Dave Campbell's Texas Football. Um, I just wanted to go through those. We, I don't know who's got to do them. Uh, I don't have my computer with me when I'm at Brian's house filming. and I don't really like having my computer in front of me. It's distracting, but it's still I get to get access to stuff that I don't always remember or forget to remember to put in my notes. Um, One day you might wake up and think, time for a change. When your friend asks, want to try this place? And you say, you know. <clears throat> Fuck you. Uh, it, it's kind of another shitty week like last week for, for like big games, man. There's not a lot. Games of the week is going to be some, uh, I think like Three Rivers. <sighs> Hopefully Three Rivers and a Fugio. Um. You gotta go with, I mean, it's such a bad week for great matchups, man. I, but I think Victoria East and Miller will at least be an interesting matchup. Uh, there's a lot of talent on both sides, regardless of Victoria East record and, and never knowing which i hate to keep putting that on victoria man but one of these days they'll break out of that funk where you just sometimes they just they're they give you a 10 and sometimes they give you a five you just sometimes you don't know which victoria's gonna show up but uh, there's a lot of talent on both sides uh, for victoria east and corpus Christi miller so at, at least for that it's gonna be a fun game to watch i imagine regardless i still think miller's gonna win that game by uh, I, I say 28 ish points but it it'll be a fun It'll be a fun 28-point game difference. I mean, it's... Miller's going to score probably in the 50s. Victoria East will score about 28, 28-ish. Um, it'll be a fun game to watch, man. But there's just not a lot of great matchups this week. Uh, another one would be Three Rivers and... 
Refugio, Three Rivers has really improved, man. They're they're winning games that they should be winning based on what they have this season. Uh, they're not really being played close. They got the big win over Falls City, who played for State last year. The big win over Nixon Smiley by multiple scores. They beat Tab by multiple scores. Banchetti by multiple scores. They beat the hell out of Skidmore Tyne and uh, 57 to zero this last week. I think Refugio beat. Bloomington 55 to 0 this last week. Um if we was only lost as the first game of the season against uh Hitchcock, but Hitchcock's I mean Hitchcock's undefeated and beating the hell out of everybody. They're just in their bigger program. They're three A uh three rivers game and if we it's at the Fuyo. Yeah, it just I, I I'm not gonna go on a crazy pick and say three rivers is gonna win. I but I will say I, I look I don't care who wins, but I hope it's a close game. It's just better for South Texas football when if other teams would start stepping up and hanging with with what if we was able to do in the two way level uh, locally, uh, so hopefully, man, hopefully this is it for Three Rivers, man. It's uh, it'd be nice if I can go. I'd like to go. So if Three Rivers coach, get me a sideline pass. If we have coach, get me a sideline. Josh Perez, sideline pass. Let me film that game. Get y'all's kids on film and make a nice highlight video of it. Um, It'd be, it'd be a nice game to go to, man. I just I just because of history and and then the way if we were rebounded. From the loss of Hitchcock, it wasn't the first game afterwards, but the way they beat the hell out of Edna, man. Edna's a beast this year, dude. I still say Edna's better than Fuyo, but if we found a way to not just beat them, but beat the hell out of them. Uh, they beat them by 18 points, man. It's it, it's hard for me to picture the three rivers hanging closer to Fuyo than Edna did. So, I, But I'm pulling for them, man. I just, I like, I like. I like what they're doing there. I, I hope it is. I hope it is close, man. But if I'm being realistic, I got to go with it. If we we'll go by something like 49 to 14, and don't get offended if you're in Three Rivers, I hope I'm 100% wrong, man. I just it's not. It's it's better for South Texas football if these games start getting more competitive. Uh, and the Fool is not the only local 2A D1 that's just killing everybody. Uh, it'd be nice to have more people that can hang with them. But um, so that's another game of the week. Uh, uh, another game of the week. I just it's just so hard to pick them this week, man. It's just not a lot of good. Lon London and Edna should be a good game. I don't really know be if the Edna shows up that showed up to play at a Fuyo, then it's gonna be a close game. If, if they if the Edna shows up that was the Edna the rest of the season, I don't see it being close. But because of that and how it could be close, depending on which Edna shows up, like that's I have to, it's still one of those interesting games, like the Miller East game. Like this, despite like you look at their records, the Miller Miller East is going to be a good game because of the talent on the field. Uh, London and Edna should be a good game because of the talent on the field also that night. Um, it doesn't always work out that way, like I said, man. Depends which it. Hopefully the real Edna shows up, not the one that showed up and just was flat against the Fulia, but. Uh, there's a lot of talent, man, on that Edna team. They just turned around after that, and they beat the hell out of Sinton. So that tells you how good Edna is, but uh, how good Refugio is, too, to be honest, man. I mean, there was a good rebound. They said, Refugio was young this year, so maybe that's why they started off slow and got hammered in that first game. It's just, it's it's hard to judge when a team's young, man. It is four or five games later. It's just, you can improve a lot, and that's what it looks like Refugio's done. But uh, not a lot of games of the week, man. Those are the three games of the week I got for this week. Uh... It just wasn't a lot of good matchups, man, much like last week. Uh, hopefully next week it starts to get better. I haven't looked ahead to see what's what's up next week. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's just those three games for the games of the week this week. And uh, now we'll get to the Gridiron Demigods. I am God. For this week, um, that was a lot again, man, and some of the same people. Uh, uh, the J.J. Acosta from Taft. It was a gridiron demigod again. He passed for over 300 and rushed for over 100. And he's, I think he's been on it every week. We didn't start doing it until like the second or third week. But looking back on it, if he, he would have gotten it every week, to remind everybody what it takes to qualify for the gridiron uh, demigods, it's uh, as a quarterback, you have to have over 400 yards of total offense or five, touch five touchdowns anyway. Like, it bypasses the yardage. You don't have to have the yardage if you have five total TDs in a game. Uh, for, but for quarterbacks, it's 400 total yards. Uh, for running backs, it's over 200 yards rushing. For receivers, it's over 200 yards receiving. Um, for defense, if you have 10 solo, solo tackles uh, or more, um, or if you have two return TDs for uh, whether it be punt return, kickoff return, interception return, if you have any kind of two two returns for t TDs on special teams or defense, uh, that'll qualify you. Also, uh, I don't rem I don't have them all memorized, man. I got to look at them.
Uh, the first, oh my God, an Alice kid finally broke through the gridiron demigods. Cutter Stewart from Alice had a 491 yards passing and seven touchdown passes against La Feria this last week. Uh, and that was only a three quarters, man. If they would lift him in the whole four quarters, you're talking about like a 600 yard game, maybe, probably. Uh, but finally, a coyote breaks through through the gridiron demigods. Coyotes, uh, Cutter Stewart. 491 yards, passing 7 TDs and 3 quarters. Uh, Landon Hassa from TM. This is an example of the, this, what I said a while ago, but if you have two returns for TDs, you qualify. Landon Hassa from TM had two punt returns for TDs, one for 90 and one for 70 yards. And he had also had a TD reception, so this kid ended up having three, but he had the two return TDs, so that qualifies him right away uh, for Gridiron Demigod. J.J. Costa, who I already said, he had 200, 311 passing yards, 156 rushing, and he had an interception on defense. Uh, so that's over 400 yards of offense that qualifies him, regardless of how many touchdown pa touchdowns he had or not. Um, Reed Dooms from GP, the kid that took over for the injured uh, Redden kid at quarterback. He had 349 yards of offense. Not 400 to qualify, but he had five TD passes. So if you have five TD passes, it don't matter how many yards you have, you automatically qualify. Uh, Skyler Rubio of Cal Allen. Another example of the return stuff, if you have two returns for TDs, regardless of its interception, punt, whatever, uh, Skylar Rubio from Cal Allen had a, an interception for a return for a TD and a punt return for a TD. Is he the first Cal Allen kid we have on here? I think he's also the first Cal Allen kid we have on uh, Gridiron Demigods. Uh, Elijah Huff from West Oso had 311 yards again, rushing and four TDs. Uh, Uh, that kid from West Oso has already had a couple of, he's had two or three 300 yard games. I think this is, he's had two 300 yard games. So that's, he's another one that qualifies, qualifies for the gridiron demi, demigods. But uh, one, two, three, four, five. See, so that's six kids. Every week we have about five or six, man. We, we kind of tried, we thought we were setting the standards high to qualify. And there might be maybe one or two kids every week. But it's just, it's a lot of kids getting yards here, man. It's. Because why? Because offense wins championships. I don't want to hear that defense wins championships bullshit. This is a 1970 where everybody ran power eye, running, running, kill the clock attacks, and the scores were always low. That's where this whole thing with the defense wins championships uh, deal came out of. This is in modern football, offense wins championships, points wins championships, offense. So that's it for the gridiron demigods. I was we had I had the state rankings down, but these state rankings are different than the Dave Camels. I already the Dave Camels one, so, so forget about these. But uh, uh, the Chinga segment. Who <laughs> that? Who dare? There was a lot of Chingas giving up this week, man. There was a lot more than usual, man. I thought things would. Start, I mean, I guess because. Yeah, it's starting to get into district games. We had a lot of district games this last week. Finally, district started for most people. Uh, then there's a lot of teams off this week also, as far as like when I was saying, there's not a lot of great matchups this week. Uh, a lot of kids from the Alice district are off. And there's a couple of districts that are off this week with bye weeks. So I think next week is when it starts getting into where er most people have already had their bye weeks. And so uh, th they'll start being better matchups. But uh, Gene, guys, that we're handed out for this week. Oh... Corpus Christi Veterans Memorial, 49. Corpus Christi Moody, 0. Cal Allen, 54. Zapata, 0. Uh, Alice, 73. La Feria, 13. Tolosa Midway, 54. Kingsville, 20. Banchetti, 38. Monte Alto, 8. Three Rivers, 57. Skidmore, Tyne, and 0. Ingleside, 45. Raymondville, 8. Uh, Cuero, 83. Beeville, 28. <laughs> I'm not laughing at this score. It was like so weird because... I, I was posting the halftime score because it was it was a close game. I think Guero was only up twenty eight to twenty one in halftime, and then I'll, I don't know what happened in that second half, man. But uh, Guero repped it for fifty four points in that second half. I think maybe Adrian Salazar wasn't there to cheer it on or something. But you fucked up, Adrian, man. You should have been there. It would have been a closer game. But uh, Bembolt thirty six, Pettis zero, Awadulce forty seven, Austin at achieve. I don't know how to say that seven. Uh, Victoria West seventy two. Corpus Christi King, 21. Benavides, 34. Mission Veterans Memorials, JV, 0. Uh, Victoria East, 54. CC Carroll, 7. Uh, Miller, 49. Ray, 17. 
<clears throat> London 38, Aransas Pass 6, uh, Full Hill 55, Bloomington 0, Stockdale 47, Freer 0. So those are all the chingas handing out for this week. Um, like we said, it's all in good fun, man. It's just... Unless you're a team that's always being given chingas, but... <laughs> it's all in good fun, man. And when I do something like this, it's... It's not to be negative, it's... Like, like I said before in past episodes, it's bulletin board material. You know, if you don't want to be on the chingas, being talked about is you got a chinga from another team. It's just, uh, Hopefully it's bulletin board material. Your kids see stuff like that. They do something about it. They, they, they try and better themselves. I mean, it's not going to happen like right away. But I mean, just overall, like for next year, the year after, whatever, hopefully it catches on. Hopefully it catches on like that. Um, it's all in good fun. And, and like I said, also just to motivate, man, is for bulletin board material. Uh, but... And I asked, I posted today before I started filming this episode on the, I posted on the Facebook page to, uh, uh, for you guys to get involved and give some shout, shout outs, shout outs, or uh, if you want anything mentioned, any questions asked, and nobody, nobody, nobody participates, man, this is where it gets, I mean, this is where you guys have a chance to participate, and if you don't, there was a couple, I mean, someone asked was going to be a live episode, that's not really, uh, Ruben Pettis says, shout out to Cutter Stewart, 7 TDs and 500 yards, it's quite a game. Um, someone made fun of Brian with a meme, they made up them. <laughs> Pete Bottle Jr. made a meme out of Brian for not being here today, if there's Bueller meme. That stuff's good too, but we want, you know, and I posted, Brian with I is sick with a choto again, so I'll be filming tonight's episode solo. <laughs> I might do this episode a little different than the others, let me know in the comments or message if you want. To send any shout outs or if you have any questions you want answered. You guys, man, you, you guys don't participate in the positive stuff enough. And then you wonder why I get all controversial and turn into a jackass sometimes. Because that, that's what that's what gets you guys commenting. That's what gets you guys hidden. That's what gets you guys commenting, man. And that's what brings traffic to the page, man. It, it's not that... It's not that, like I'm, 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 I need likes. It's, it's not what it's about. Like I need to be liked or something. It's, but that's what grows the page is when there's participation, when there's it's, people are hitting the like buttons, the share buttons, when people are commenting. Uh, that's what helps grow the page, man. And it's so that's why we get mad when you don't get involved, uh, unless I get controversial, like I said. And then you all complain that when it's controversial, uh, you kind of have both ways, man. Get involved in the positive stuff, and then there won't be a need for the, for the ugly stuff. But my friends at South Texas Football Unlimited the other day made a positive post about. They just raised over $500 for cancer awareness by these t-shirts they sold. And the post had already been out for like two hours. and had zero likes, zero comments, zero shares, nothing. So I went and commented on it. I said, look, man, this is why I get, I turn into a jackass on my own page sometimes because people don't respond to the positive stuff. And it's facts, man. Y you all have people like us, like South Texas Football Unlimited, like 22 Photography and Designs, uh, uh, AC Williams Photography, you have a lot of people out here that are doing stuff to promote local, and if you, you guys don't appreciate it enough, man, I'm just being honest, man, South Texas is, like, it's garbage with the participation when it comes to this stuff, even not just us, when I get on, like, the Caller Times articles, or, or the Blitz articles, there's just not enough hit likes, participation, but then you go to gossip bullshit, like Corpus Christi Chronica, <laughs> That dude's videos do tens of thousands of views. They have hundreds of likes, hundreds of shares, and that's fine, man. You get into that too. Like it's, I get it. It's fun, but I mean, support, support the good stuff also. The way you support crap like that, uh, it's. I don't get it, man. I mean, it, yeah, but like I said earlier, man, this wasn't a great. This like two back-to-back -back weeks. It wasn't a great week for like great matchups. So this is was not a lot to talk about for this week and. I want to cut it short also because I'm filming late today and then there's something going on, on my computer where it takes like over a day for these fucking things that I make to render on the Adobe Premiere Pro editor I use. Uh, I don't know why it's not a new computer, I guess. So I got to cut it short so I can put it to render already and then maybe it'll be ready Friday morning. <laughs> I don't know why it's happening, <coughs> but I didn't use... I didn't use green screen this time, obviously. So I'm wondering if the green screen thing is what's making that particular video editor take forever to render and i'll find i'm find out right now when i put this one to render it's if it's not if it doesn't take a day and a half to render then i know that it's that green screen stuff i'm using that for whatever reason it it uses a lot of it uses a lot of memory on this particular app uh, uh, editor um and that's why it runs so slow on my computer i don't have a very good computer it's not it's not the greatest computer if you all want to chip in to get me aiden aware 
I thank you so much. I would love an Alienware computer, man. Some have a lot of power, some have a lot of memory. Um, but yeah, that's about it for this week. Um, I think, man, we've been saying this and we don't do it. I want to do a live episode, but I want the live episode to be somewhere at one of the restaurants. Uh, well, I'll work that out but sometime before the playoffs, man. We'll do a live episode. Either before the playoffs or before a big game like Alice versus Cal Allen and, or, or the uh, CC Miller versus CC Vets. Uh, let me see when those happen. I wonder if they're the same week. That would be crazy. It would be crazy. And then we can do that show live for sure. Let's see. Cal Allen. Cal Allen versus Alice. Ugh, I hate when these things bounce down. Tricky and clicking on them. Cal Allen versus Alice is October 14th. Oh, that's six days after. It's on the, it's on a Thursday. I wonder. I guess that's being televised. Miller versus Vets is October twentieth. Those are two of the bigger games coming up. That, and GP versus Flyer Bluff is a B. GP versus Flyer Bluff will obviously be another good one. Let's see when that one is. Oh, that's the last game of the year, and that's on November fourth. Uh, yeah, that's why there's not a lot of good matchups this week. Or Flyer Bluff's another one that's off this week. Um, GP is another one that's off this week. I think most of that district and then the Alice district are off this week. That's why there's not a lot of good matchups. Uh, but yeah, man, you all start getting involved, man. Maybe we'll see what happens when we do a live show. We'll do a live episode for the, uh, what is it, two, three weeks from now? Alice. Alice versus. You know what? Fuck it. We'll do a live episode next week. If Brian doesn't have COVID and he's ready to go by next week, we'll do a live episode. If not in two weeks, we'll do a live episode. We gotta see what happens, man, if you all participate or not. You don't even participate in this shit, or we're supposed to expect you to participate in live shows, man. I don't know, man. I mean, it'd be nice to do it, but... Y'all just, uh, just start, man, start participating, man. P -p Pretend we're Corpus Christi Chronica. Call us South Texas Chronica. <laughs> Bloodsport Chronica. Whatever it takes to get you guys more involved, man. It's, uh... Oh, the thing with the player profiles that we talked about. I'm gonna do that in separate, separate videos, man. I'm gonna start creating videos for, uh... Where we feature the players, the, the videos that y'all send us, and then the the questionnaire that they answered. I'm I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make some kind of template for that right now, so that I can start doing those in separate videos, man. That way it doesn't get lost in these episodes. Uh, uh, that way it has its own thing. It has its own episode on a different kind of show. Uh, so so keep sending us in the videos of your kids. We'll share the video itself. Uh, on the timeline, but then the video and the questionnaire, if you all send us, like, they had the, the players answer the questionnaire, we'll, we'll do that, and like I said, I'm going to create a template for that right now to make a separate show for that. Um, but I thank you guys for participating, man. I just wish you guys would participate more. We'll see how it goes. Uh, just tell us what you want, what you like on the videos, what you don't like, and we'll listen, man. We'll do whatever we have to do to, to, to keep growing this page, but uh, thank you guys for participating. Thank you guys for following the page. Thank you guys for watching. Those of you who took the time to watch, uh, Get more involved and all these things will get more interesting. Thank you.